Hello. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you'll probably have picked up that I'm on a bit of a travel palette adventure. And I'm afraid I might have bought two more palette options just out of curiosity. So the first one is this Winsor & Newton Cotman Watercolour Field Travel Set. I did see um, the other Winsor & Newton Field Travel Set that's like a navy one and looks a bit more sophisticated than this one. And I was tempted to go for it, but actually the watercolour capacity and mixing space that it has is quite a bit smaller than this one. So I, I found this one on, um, it was Amazon Warehouse. So it was classed as used, but as new. And it's, yeah, it's brand new as far as I can tell. So I decided to go for this one and we'll take a look at it. So it's quite, it's quite a chunky little unit. But my curiosity about this set is that it's completely self-contained. So we can take out this centre bit and this is, um, so we've got two water mixing containers. And these can clip on in two positions, here or further back. I've chosen the further back um, position because I think there it might get in the way a little bit. And then the centre part is water bottle. You've got space for a brush. And this is my, I think my favourite travel brush at the moment, the six silver black velvet and it doesn't it's too wide to fit in that section um, so possibly I might just I might remove that um, center line but we'll see the other thing I like is it's got a huge amount of mixing space so this I'll sh show you on the side it's quite a chunky lid, but it does have this whole extra mixing area. And then the same again at the bottom of the palette. There's a drawer that comes out. So that is a, that is a pretty hefty amount of mixing space. If you use the dividers, you've got room for 12 half pans, but these do actually come out. Now these come with Cotman paints which is the Winsor & Newton like um, student grade paints. I'm not going to open these, I'll probably just sell them on eBay or something let someone get some use from them. But it does leave this quite nice area here. So what I might do is see how many pans I can fit in um, loosely. So <laughs> I've been raiding my old palettes well, they're not that old, actually, only this year well, I've, when I've really been getting into watercolour. But I've, I've raided them quite a bit recently for my other uh, travel palettes. Um, but I'll just put some in here and see how many you think we could uh, fit in. These are all sorts of brands. So, yeah, you can fit an extra two in if you take out the dividers. Let me just make it up again and... I want to do some comparisons with other sets. It feels a little bit clunky and, and plastic, but actually it's not it's not too bad. It doesn't it's not too cheap feeling. And I think you can actually take out the water and mixing palette separately if you if you just want to refill it separately, you don't have to open it all up to get it out. Okay. So if if I take um, my portable painter, for example. And put that back together. I guess the thing with the portable painter though is that you still need to take water and that's going to add bulk to it. So this is 
these are the smallest water solutions that I've got. I mean, obviously, if you're going to take that, that's not very much water capacity at all. That's probably reasonably comparable amount of water size. So yeah, I suppose you're still looking at less bulk if you take the portable painter and a water supply. So that that's kind of all in one. But yeah, that's that's quite an interesting option. I do I do like it. I do find it quite pleasing, and um, I'm definitely going to fill that and I guess take it out on days when I'm not too worried about. A bit of extra bulk because you know maybe I'm just driving somewhere and doing a fairly short walk to get to somewhere that I'd want to paint. But no, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy. I've got that actually. That's quite a nice little unit. And then the other thing that I have, one of my viewers left a comment and said that um, they had the De La Rowney Aquafine mini travel set. And I managed to find one for like five pounds on eBay and it was new it was all in the plastic so I was a bit sad because when I opened it the little travel brush was missing but to be honest I wouldn't have used it anyway so I don't I don't actually know I'll look it up and add it to the video I don't know what kind of range the Aquafine is I don't know if that's a student grade or if De La Rowney, De La Rowney have like an artist's quality um, for the price that you can find it on brand new, I'm assuming it's student grade. But what the viewer suggested is um, removing all of the inserts and just filling up the tin. Because it's a lovely, you've got the thumb hold on the back, but it's a lovely slimline tin. So what's that, six, 12, 18 28 so yeah that's <laughs> that's quite impressive you've got a reasonable amount of mixing space and, and it's already white which is nice i don't think you've got room for a, a travel brush down there you would have one You'd have room for the travel brush in the bottom there. And you could have a rolled up paper towel or something down the side. I mean, obviously you still need to take water with you and, a, and this time a water mixing container. So you're still looking at, at those two, but that's a significant quantity of paint in there. So, um, the other palette that I've been using quite a bit is this one. So that's got 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 paints in it. That you do have some additional mixing space with this one. Um, just looking at the mixing space size. Yeah, you've got half as much again if you use this type of palette. But you know, that's a, that's you know a decent width difference, uh, depth distance. Sorry, the width is fairly similar, and the height's more on this one. Yeah, so I thought I'd just show you these um, different options. So up until the start of this year, I'd only used watercolour tubes along with this kind of palette. And in January, I did a really big paint buying session from Jackson's. I've got a paint haul video on it. And I accumulated quite a few half pans. So I've put these three palettes together this year and some I've made with um, empty palettes from Amazon 
from my and made them up from my paint tubes and then some others um, I bought as half pans so I've been raiding them to make up these palettes in the last couple of weeks I made up the portable painter most recently and this was all pans from A Gallo and Windsor and Newton. My portable painter was Windsor and Newton pans with some of my tube paints um, from Snellier. And actually these three colours, although the Snellier paints are a bit runnier, these three colours seem to have dried out quite nicely and are okay. The only paint I've been having problems with running um, because a bit of softness is my lemon yellow so at some point I might just buy a separate half pan and, and pop that one in there so I'm going to pick some colours for here and I'd quite like to keep on trying to use my half pans that I've already got just for fun really though if it seems like a really odd selection then I will have to make some up from tubes Okay, so I've just been playing around with colours for my palette and it's been quite interesting. I've learnt a few things. I was saying in another video about watercolour paper that I didn't like the moleskin watercolour journals and I've just realised another reason why. I've just been mixing up um, random bits of colour. And this is, this is moleskin paper. And it's the way the water soaks into the paper that I don't like. So I don't know if you can tell, it just kind of sinks in in a really unpleasing way. Whereas the Canson XL just, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, it just doesn't soak in in the same way. The colours kind of sit more nicely where the moleskin it's almost like the paper goes grey where it sinks in a bit more and it kind of like the paper here it kind of just looks sodden as opposed to the colors just kind of behaving more nicely so yeah that kind of confirmed that i really don't like moleskin even for coloring swatches that much so i picked out an initial palette and i started mixing and there's quite a few a gallo colors in here and so the next realization i had is that the A Gallo colours, although they're absolutely beautiful in their own right, I don't find that they mix very well. So here's my original A Gallo palette. Almost all of them are multi-pigment. And they seem quite opaque. So I've decided what I'm going to do with a little tin, um, with a little tin palette, I think I'm going to put my more opaque colours in here. And in my Winsor Newton one, I'm, I'm going to put the more transparent colours that um, seem to mix better. And I'm going to div you know, divide them into two. There are a couple of exceptions in that, but I'm going to show you now the 14 colours I've decided on for my Winsor Newton palette. I did cave though, and I picked two colours from tube paint because I was struggling in those areas. I'll paint them out in a kind of a colour wheel format so you can see what bases that I've got covered. Sorry, this is gloopy because I've just poured it out into a pan. So this is Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose and this is my warm red that I've chosen. Okay, the next one, just because I wanted to include it, is Winsor & Newton's Rose Doré. And next along is Winsor & Newton's uh, Windsor Orange, sorry, Red Shade. And then my other tube paint, which I wanted to include. This is, um, let me show you, Jackson's Indian Yellow. And it's 
beautiful vivid warm yellow now when I was mixing out I was using the Naples yellow and I've decided to put that in in my other the other palette that I'm going to make up of more opaque colors but I did find that I could do without a lemon yellow and I was happy enough to make do with um, this fig green so I don't have a cooler yellow in this palette I'm not really a fan of like spring greens in their own right but I actually really love this a gallo fig green it's got kind of a, a subtlety about it we also decided to include this gorgeous earth green cool from a gallo as well and this is harbor blue again from a gallo This is Winsor & Newton Cerulean Blue Red Shade. I started off with Cerulean Hue from A Gallo, but this is actually three pigments, including white pigment, and it just wasn't mixing as nicely as the Winsor & Newton. And I've got A Gallo's PB29. Um, ultramarine. This is one of the few single pigment A Gallo paints that I've got. And another one is um, is A Gallo's um, PB60 in Danthrone Blue. <laughs> very wonky colour wheel. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's ten colours. I've got four spaces left. And this is that put it here. So I've got the beautiful um, Quinacridone Burnt Scarlet from Daniel Smith. This was one that I'd poured into a pan a while ago because I didn't have space in my big permanent palettes. Then this is quite an opaque paint, but I absolutely love it and it's going in this palette. And this is A Gallows Copper Blue. And the next colour I've got, which I don't use very often, but it's a very pretty colour. I do want to use it more. It's not a high, it doesn't have like a high tinting strength. But this is Winsor & Newton's Cobalt Violet, PB14. I think I'm going to pick Daniel Smith Burnt Umber. Yeah. 
am happy with that palette now. It's funny how my palette seem to be taking on like different characteristics. So I feel like I've got my really, really lovely mixing palette. Um, apart from the middle of the row that I kind of chucked in at the end, the top row and the bottom row are just all amazingly good mixers with each other. And that's my kind of most reliable palette in a way. But then I put together the portable painter really, really quickly. And I feel like that's just such a fun, bright, I don't know, lovely palette. That feels like my fun one anyway. And then the little kind of card, the Nomadic Artist one, that's my granulating, my moody granulating palette. And then I've got my, my little uh, portable painter micro that's just oh I, I don't think I ever showed you the little card I made for it I was enjoying making little um, swatch cards the other day and so this feels I don't know almost it's got more blues in this one and more kind of subtle greens maybe this is like a more moody mellow palette so, yeah, I quite like that one. Right, I'm going to put those, I think I'm just going to glue, um, hot glue gun these into the Winsor & Newton palette now. So I've just used the hot glue gun to put these half pans in the Winsor & Newton palette. And one thing I realised I forgot to do is test out the little paintbrush that comes with it. So I haven't got a good true red on the palette, so I just might as well try mixing one of those up. Oops, a bit too orangey. So that was yeah. So the the brush is um, quite nice. It's it's got a good amount of snap in it and holds its point nicely, but it doesn't hold much water. It's a, a Copman five. Um, yeah, not great for washes or anything like that. I'm probably not great for super fine detail. Let's just try a few lines with it. already okay so that's that set now I'm going to put together the palette with all my leftover half pans <laughs> okay I'll pop them all in then I'll swatch them out and show you what I've got so these are basically just the half pans I've got left which are it's either semi-transparent or opaque or just haven't played nicely with other colours. In their own right they look quite pretty so let me show you what's in there. So this is Holbein's Jean Brilliant number no. one. And then this is Jackson's Naples Yellow Hue. This 
this whole binds Naples yellow. And that's Arancioni from A Gallo. That's Ruby Red from May Gallo. And Pietra Rosa from May Gallo. And this is the very pretty, brilliant pink from Holbein. And that's Holbein's Lilac. This is Rembrandt's Dusk Pink. Okay, this next one is Ultramarine Violet that I got from Just To Go Sketching. I, th I thought it was Ultramarine, but the word Violet was kind of down the side. That's not necessarily um, semi-opaque. I'm not sure um, what that one is like, but I seem to end up not picking the purples for my palettes. Okay, so this next one is A Gallo's Tyrian Purple. That's Holbein's Lavender. That's the Cerulean Hue that I was talking about from A Gallo. It's got white pigment in it. And that's Holbein Compost Blue. These Holbeins are all from the set of 12 pastel watercolour paints. That's Holbein's Horizon Blue. A Gallows Teal Blue. And that's A Gallows Aquamarine. And that's A Gallows Viridian Hue. Holbein compost green. It's Holbein emerald green. And that's Jackson's Venetian red. Windsor and Newton's Cap at Morton Violet, and then my one metallic half pan. That's Rembrandt's Copper. Okay, so I've popped all of my leftover half pans into a palette now, and I, oh my gosh, that is the messiest thing I've ever done. I'm like, 
my hands are stained. My advice is don't try putting pans in a palette when you've just swatched them and they're all soaking wet. I've arranged them like this so that if I did want to, I can just pop my little paintbrush in the bottom like that. And I also added one more paint, the shell pink, and then I moved them around slightly. So these are the colours that I've got. And oh my gosh, they are gorgeous. And it's quite funny because these are literally the leftover paints that didn't make it into any of my other travel palettes that I've been putting together. And I think they're absolutely beautiful. And I was reminded just exactly why I bought each of them. So I'll just show them up close. I've added the pigment information now. So like I said before, most of these don't mix brilliantly well with other colours or they make very opaque, murky colours. A lot of them have got white pigment in, PW6, and others are just quite opaque pigments like PR101. But yeah, I'm really, really happy to have all these together in one place. I guess if I want to do more illustrative-y type painting, then I've got them all in one place. So here are my travel palettes and I just find it enormously satisfying that I pretty much had the exact number of half pans to fill them perfectly. Here are my old empty palettes. <laughs> so I've got my more opaque ones here. I've got my kind of bright cheerful ones here. I've got my more slightly more moody muted one here. I've got my little granulating one. Again, I chopped up the swatch that I did when I was putting this palette together and made it into the color chart for it. And then I've got my um, good all round, my large all rounder, and then my small all rounder there. So I hope that was fun and helps sum up some of the different qualities of different travel palettes that are around. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye! Just as last note, I popped out this afternoon to the Village Knit and Natter group and I took along the Windsor & Newton palette that I just made up and the um, Stillman & Burns little notepad that I got.